Hello everybody and welcome back. I have here another Baldur's Gate 3 build that I've been working on. I call this one the Thunder Knight. Uh, this is one that I'm working on where I really want to use a couple things together that probably don't get used together all that often, and that's uh, Thunder Acuity, so Arcane Acuity using a certain hat that applies Arcane Acuity when you do Thunder Damage and the Eldritch Knights of Class of Fighter. So I'm going to demonstrate this on Lazelle right here and hop right into it. Um, obviously you can play this on, a, on your own custom character however you want. In this save, Lazelle already has the Potion of Everlasting Vigor, so she's going to get a plus two strength from that, so that, that's going to be good for this build. Starting out in abilities, we want to set that strength up at 16. Um, for reasons I'll elaborate on later, we want Intelligence at 16. I do Constitution at 14 generally, which is technically negated by an item I'm choosing to wear in this save, but you don't have access to that item for most of the game, so I wouldn't worry about uh, dumping Constitution here. This is to demonstrate the build's uh, theory. And then put Dexterity and Wisdom both at 10. We're going to start fighter, our fighting style. I recommend great weapon fighting here. You could also do defense in certain situations. That might be better, uh, but generally I prefer great weapon fighting for this. Then let's go ahead and walk through leveling it up. Not a lot of decisions to make on most of these levels for fighter, but I'll show you the whole build path. Since we are going Eldritch Knight, we have to make cantrip and spell choices. Uh, this is not an Eldritch Knight build that uses cantrips for damage. So just take utility cantrips here, like Blade Ward and Minor Illusion, something like that. Um, there are good Eldritch Knight builds that are similar to this. Uh, Aestis RPG posted an Ice Knight build recently. Um, those ones do use cantrips and take advantage of the war magic feature we'll get at level 7, but this is not one where we really have that as an option because we want thunder damage to be the theme, and you'll notice none of these cantrips do thunder damage, so trying to build around war magic is going to be kind of hard. Spell-wise, go with things that have a lot of strong utility. You would think you'd go thunder wave, you might, but you'll probably replace it later. So for now I'll put thunder wave because it's a uh, thematic for the build, but I think you'll be replacing this one. Shield is the must-have here. Expanded ones are really nice uh, because that gives you access to a long strider for your party if you need it. And Find Familiar is really strong in the early game for this build. Summoning a Raven Familiar to blind enemies and give you advantage on attacks is very good. Uh, so those are the two I'd usually go with. Other time, otherwise, you know, generally good stuff like this itself. Um, even Grease, but there's technically a save there. Um, but I think the default best here is Find Familiar. At level 4, we're going to start picking up feats. Um, we're going to take both Great Weapon Master and Alert at 6, so you could reverse the order if you wanted to, um, but I would usually do Great Weapon Master first. And then, yeah, pick something that's actually good. So you might want Magic Missile for certain fights, or you might want Chromatic Orb. Both of those are good. I'll put Chromatic Orb in for now, and for now I'm actually going to have us replace Thunder Wave with Long Strider because I think that's a stronger utility for the build, and we keep going along. At Fighter level 5 we get extra attack, and I'm not going to be replacing spells right now. At Fighter level 6 we get another feat. This is where we take Alert. I strongly recommend alert, because when you have 10 ducks, your initiative is pretty bad. So the plus 5 to initiative and the can't be surprised I think is really important for this build, since we're spread across constitution, intelligence, and strength. At level 7, uh, we have our war magic feature. That's not really good for us, because we're not going to use that except in niche situations where we might cast blade ward and then make a weapon attack afterward. Spell-wise, um, these don't matter that much. The only good level 2 spell, I think, from the Eldritch Knight list is Darkness. Um, 
I'm just putting Shatter in as a filler until we replace it later. And these, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily replace any of these. I think those are great spells for the build. At level eight, we're going to get our last feat. Um, there is a one level dip of a class, which you could actually do around here when you hit level eight or when you hit level nine, or you could do at the end when you hit level 12. The timing of it depends on the tempo you want in your playthrough. Uh, but for now, I'll just show you all the fighter levels first and finish with the other class. From the expanded list, uh, you're going to want to pick up Hold Person. And then we're going to use our Replace Spell feat to get rid of Shatter. And replace it with Tasha's Hideous Laughter. And then feat-wise, uh, you're just going to bump up Strength. The reason we got those control spells is because of the class feature at level 9. Um, sorry, it's not at level 9, it's at level 10, so I'll keep going for now and I'll show it to you on the next level. At fighter level 10, we get the subclass feature, Eldritch Strike. When you hit a creature with a weapon attack, it has disadvantage on its next saving throw against a spell you cast before the end of your turn. <coughs> sorry, of your next turn. Hold Person and Tasha's are both very, very strong control spells. Uh, once we're in this bracket with our plus three to intelligence, our plus four from profic proficiency, we have a 15 spell save DC on those. Uh, and with the disadvantage, uh, we're beginning to be in striking distance of making enemies fail the save and uh, be controlled. And in fact, that's a theme we're going to get into shortly once we get into items, because there are ways we can almost guarantee that with this build. As far as additional cantrips go, um, there's not a whole lot here for utility. If you were doing a damaging cantrip, Shocking Grasp is probably not the worst for you, but it doesn't actually really play into the build in any way, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to show Shocking Grasp here, because why not? And then spell-wise, yeah, now you're back to, oh, do I re-add Shatter? Do I add in Thunder Wave? Again, I wouldn't add Thunder Wave for reasons that'll become apparent at level 12, but you can do whatever you want here. At level 11, we get that class feature for triple attack with improved extra attack. That's why we did 11 levels of fighter. Um, Gust of Wind might be situationally useful, so I'll throw that in. And then at level 12, you could just do this, this build basically as 12 straight levels of fighter, uh, but there's one small weakness that I think is kind of worth losing two points of strength for to patch it up and and we can patch that weakness up if we take a one level dip in cleric uh for cleric cantrips uh pick whatever again utility is fine and we go into tempest domain and so perhaps picking a storm god is more appropriate for tempest domain uh and you'll get to prepare one spell uh might as well be command. That'll become apparent as to why later. You could also do healing word for a bonus action heal, but I'm going to throw command here. And uh, that's that's it. That's the build. From that one level dip in cleric, though, we got our domain spells, which are fog cloud and thunder wave, and that's why I didn't take that from Eldritch Knight. That's it, that's the leveling path. Now now we have to hop into items to really see what the theory of this build is. So you're a heavy armor user, so you get the best heavy armor you can. Uh, the core items though for this build, actually the singular core item, honestly, is the Hat of Storm Science Power, which you can buy from Araj in Moonrise Towers. She is the Hemomancer, I guess, Blood Magic Drow. Um, you can buy this from her. When the wearer deals thunder damage, they gain arcane acuity. Okay, that's pretty good. Because as I mentioned, in Eldritch Knight, it does not show our spell save DC correctly, but the math for our spell save DC on Tasha's and on Hold Person is that you have a base eight, you add four for proficiency, 
you would add three for our intelligence modifier. That's at 15. If we can stack arcane acuity from our hat, we can get up to 10 stacks of arcane acuity. Uh, and that would give us a plus 10 to our spell save DC, which would be a 25 spell save DC. And then anything that we've hit has disadvantage on that save against a spell save DC of 25. Uh, targets that have disadvantage and need to roll a 25 are probably not saving against your spells. Uh, this, this can be very powerful with all three options that we have. This can also even work with command, except our wisdom is lower. So the highest we're going to get that is a spell save DC of 22 with max stacks of acuity. Um, but that might situationally work as well. Now, if we're doing arcane acuity, obviously, uh, uh, it, specifically for these control spells, these enchantment spells, the Band of the Mystic Scoundrel is going to be the best in slot ring. After hitting a creature with a weapon attack, you can cast illusion or enchantment spells as a bonus action. So now we can go in, we can hit three times. Uh, well, I should suppose, how are we doing thunder damage? How are we getting this arcane acuity? The simple answer is that the third core item is Drake Throat Glaive. Uh, we get this so that we can make any weapon that we want do a d4 of thunder damage on hit. And that's going to count as us doing thunder damage. That's going to stack our arcane acuity. So I've already applied Drake Throat Glaive for the day on Baldurin's Giant Slayer, uh, which I'm going to bind now as my Eldritch Knight weapon. Um, that means that each time I hit with the greatsword, I'm doing thunder damage. Each time I'm doing thunder damage, I'm getting stacks of arcane acuity. So if I go use my three attacks, even without action surge, I'm, I should now be at six arcane acuity. If I action surge, I can max it out and then use uh, these control spells as a bonus action. Already at plus six uh, from Arcane Acuity, you're making things roll uh, with disadvantage against a 21 DC on, on Tasha's and on Hold Person. That is probably going to land most of the time. Other items that I think are worth including, you might as well get Thunderskin Cloak and Ring of Spiteful Thunder because you're also going to wear Gloves of Belligerent Skies. And so we're going to do Reverb with this build as well. Each time you do Thunder Damage, <coughs> you're going to put Reverb on your target. Those reverberating creatures might hit you back, and then they'll need to make a con save throw or become dazed. Or uh, we're going to keep dealing Thunder Damage to those reverberating creatures, and they're going to have to keep making con save throws against being dazed from the ring. So that's two ways to, to get enemies dazed based off of reverberation. Dazed will lower AC, dazed prevents them from using certain reactions, so we like that. And then on top of it, for reverberation reasons, we might as well use the Boots of Stormy Clamor. As I mentioned earlier, necklace and armor slots, those are just generally good items, and the ranged item you want to just be a generally good item, and then the weapon you just go for your preferred two-handed weapon, which I'll give another shout out. Nyrulna might prove to be your preferred two-handed weapon because it already does thunder damage. You can make it do any more thunder damage with Drake Throat Glaive. And because it does piercing damage, that might synergize well with your piercing damage comp if you've got someone with ballless armor or the Orin Dagger to give piercing vulnerability. So let's go demonstrate this in a little test. Let's leave camp. And I've learned my lesson. When we when we want to pick fights at these barracks, we're always going to start by killing the mage. So let's go ahead and pick this fight, killing the mage. Um, and let's make sure I've got everything on my bar that I want on the bar. Where did she go? She walked off. All right, let's pick a fight with the mage. assaulting someone you're headed for this Impero. 
as you can see, without alert, we, we might be in trouble because we might be after quite a lot of these people, but we'll go ahead and uh, let these things happen. We get to use our shield spell. As we can see, it's going to be quite useful. And you see, we already stacked Arcane Acuity from hitting once. Let's keep hitting. Unfortunate with the miss. And she failed and became dazed there. She's just, you know, also dead. Um, we already have three stacks of Arcane Acuity, so our spell save DC is at 18. I'm just curious. I'm going to fly over here and see where we are in terms of landing. Yeah, I'm going to action surge. Unfortunately, getting hit makes us lose arcane acuity, which happens with repost. I'm not landing these. These are sometimes you do want to turn great weapon master off in order to land things. This is a bad demonstration. Ah, but we knocked him prone. That feels better. So now just note what happens over the course of this round. I start at three arcane acuity. Uh, but certain things are going to happen that are going to give us a better chance of still having Arcane Acuity next round. When he attacks me, because of my Cleric Dip, I can use Wrath of the Storm Thunder. So I just lost Acuity based on getting hit, but I can do Thunder damage here to get myself some more Acuity back. Now, in this situation where it's a 1v many, I don't know how Gale can do this, but I'm just going to live with it. That's kind of nice that his reaction is rocking and protecting Lazel, so I'm not going to argue with it. Unfortunately, we lost all our acuity stacks, so hopefully I can demonstrate the effect on this better next round. So let's go ahead and do something kind of silly. Let's see if I can force a potion of speed on this. All right, so now we're hastened so I can show this off a little better. Let's go ahead and get some hits in. Boom, that's some arcane acuity. Um, eventually the computer will calculate that. Boom, that's more arcane acuity. And boom, that's more arcane acuity. So we're at six stacks. Let's go ahead and cast hold person. Because they have disadvantage on the target, they've got Oh, we've got a 99% chance of landing it, so let's go for it. Boom! We're holding person now. Oh, that used my action, not my bonus action. So, most likely, he will fail at the beginning of his turn, and then we'll be able to get crit hits on him. That would be the theory. Um, to make that more likely, I'm just going to fly up here next to this archer to make her life uh, miserable, and we'll go from there. Ah, 
Oh, it's because Gale's out of camp, but over here, apparently. I didn't realize that. So you see he failed his hold person there again, probably because we've still got a bunch of acuity stacks. Alright, so we lost a little bit of acuity, but now I'm just going to show the point of this CC is that hold person guarantees crit hits. So we're going to fly down. We're going to activate Great Weapon Master. We're just going to get crit. Boom, that's dead. And now you're back to just being a really strong fighter. You're a Great Weapon Master. You can, you can hit things well. Oh wow, he has shield? Very strange. Did not expect that. You can just hit things all day. Um, have a great time, and when your fight's normally the way you would win any other fight with a great weapon master fighter. And that's it. That's all I wanted to demonstrate with this build. Uh, you're seeing all the reverberation stacks go up and explode constantly. You're seeing the acuity stack up and work for our standard sort of Band of the Mistral Scoundrel shenanigans. And um, What's nice is, because you have Tempest Cleric to save some of your arcane acuity between rounds if you lose, you don't strictly speaking need Band of the Mystic Scoundrel. So you could play this build in a comp where you already have another party member using Helmet of Arcane Acuity plus Band of the Mystic Scoundrel, like a Swords Bard, to be the big controller with things like Hypnotic Pattern, yada yada yada. But then you can use Haste Potions or Action surge to make this character go lock down a singular target at a time like a big human boss to then take uh, crit hits and guarantee a fast victory um and you know since the necklace spot isn't uh necklace and range spots aren't contested you can put just generally good items in here and it will fit into a lot of parties where a lot of these items are relatively uncontested other builds might like these um but they're not essential to most other builds. So you've got a great uh, reverb character to fit into most parties as well. Thanks for watching.